Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Trade Winds RV Center here to congratulate you on your Jayco Eagle 336 FBOK fifth wheel. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A few things to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, at the least you're going to have to leave room for your slide to come in and out. If you want to use your awnings, you've got a lot of room to leave open for those. On your off camp side, not just your slides, but I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Your power is going to be just in front of your tires on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. And your docking station for water is just going to be just to the left of that. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once we arrive, we're going to unhook our hitch. Come up here to our auto leveling system. Touch you up and down arrow at the same time and it's going to turn that green light on. We're going to lift the unit up, get your vehicle up out of the way. Once your vehicle is up out of the way, we're going to touch auto level. We touch auto level, that is going to bring down these auto leveling systems. It's already down here. It's going to dance the front and back around. Once it's all done, that green light up here, everything will stop moving, and that green light up there is going to start flashing. Then you, you'll know your unit's level and stable. And we can hook up our power and water. This power cord plugs in the side here. You simply squeeze to unlock, push it in, wiggle it in there until these pop out, and you know that that's locked in there. Now, at the end of that 50 amp service, should you need to plug into a 110 or a 30 amp service, and your convenience pack is a 50 to 30 as well as a 30 to 15 amp reducer so you can use whatever power you need once you get our power hooked up let's hook up our water now in our docking station i'm gonna make this a little easier to read by disconnecting this quick connect here i've taken that off now at campsites we are going to hook up to city water connection we got diagrams here and two knobs to turn City water, green to the left, blue to the right. Grab your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Always use this when putting fluid in here. Come up here to where it says city water connection. Hook up your water pressure regulator. Hook up your hose, but don't turn your hose on yet. Let's find your hot water heater. Your hot water heater is located just to the right of your entry doorway. And all we're doing at this point, folks, is making sure our drain plug's back in. This door will lift completely up off here. Throw some plumber's tape around that. Not putty. Putty will gum up on you. Throw some plumber's tape around that. That's an inch and an eighth. Get that in there. Nice and snug. Once that's all the way in there tight, then you can go ahead and turn that hose on. Now, after your hose has been on for a little while, I need you to go inside and open up your slides because what I need you to do is get inside and open up your water taps Open up your taps get a nice steady flow of water going through them get all the air out of the lines Then shut them all off Then you'll know that your hot water heater is full and you can turn that out from indoors Now real quick there is an on off ele electric element down here The only time you ever want to turn this to on is if you are hooked up to 110 Otherwise leave that off you'll turn it on indoors Hot water heater doesn't seem to be working. Come out here to see if these are bubbled up. They are reset. 
uh, valves. If they're bubbled up, simply press them back in. And this would be your pressure release valve. Talk about that later. All right, let's say we're gonna go camping and we're not gonna use city water. We're gonna go dry camping or boondocking as they like to call it. In that case, we'll have a two-step process. We'll fill the tank and then we'll turn to using our water pump. So let's start with tank fill. Green to the left, blue down. Fill it in the same spot as your city water. Um, treat your hot water heater the same way. Make sure that's all plugged up. You'll go inside and watch the levels of your tanks as you fill this. Don't overfill it. Once you see that your fresh water is full, go ahead and switch this from tank fill to dry camp. Now you just turn both knobs. Now you're matching dry camp. And then whenever you want to utilize that fresh water you just filled, you turn on your water pump. You turn it on here or indoors. Wherever you turn it on at, make sure you shut it off in the same spot. All right, we're all set up. We have power and water. Let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the outside of the unit, continuing here in the docking station. So we have a nice docking light up top. Here's where you prep for solar. You can plug in a solar panel up there and it'll trickle charge your batteries. Again, you got your hot cold shower with this big spray port hose that goes on that. This is where you'll bypass your water heater when winterizing. Does show you down here how to set this to winterize and sanitize. Sanitizing is just sucking soapy water up into your tanks to clean them out. Do both of them from this side. Cable in 110. You also have a black tank flush. We'll talk about that when we dump our black tanks. Black and gray tanks down here and a convenient area to run your water hoses down through. Keep a big storage area here. With a motion sensor light, you can set those lights, lights to on or motion sensor. Got a 110 out here. Furion sells a Bluetooth speaker that you can plug into these. Purchase separately. Your big storage area next to your um, auto leveling system is your battery disconnect. This will disconnect all the battery power to the unit. That will come important later when I talk about your carbon monoxide and propane detector. And then this inverter here. Up front, propane tanks, regulator is back there, if you're lefty loosey to open, continuing back down our campsite, off campsite excuse me, here's where you'll dump your black tanks at, here's your another tank flush, then your power, it's be access to the back of your fridge, your technicians. And your ice lines. It's a vent for your microwave. Your low point drain will be easier access when the slide's closed. You see those little Solaris slide toppers? Those are placed on here so if you ever get slide toppers on this, that will sh uh, show the text on where to hook everything up at. Around the rear, you got a ladder. Utilize it. Go up there a couple times a year, check the seams of your roof and caulk as needed with recommended RV roofing caulk. That's your backup camera up there. A accessory hitch. There's a spare tire manual crank right there. Get up underneath there and crank out your spare tire. A couple places to store your sewage hoses. The outdoor kitchen area. Also has oh, my light should be on the side here. Another spot for a Bluetooth speaker. Set for TV. You can put a TV here as a backer. Cable and uh, 12 volt 110. Griddle under here. You'll pull that all the way out. Use that quick connect LP hose. Down to your quick connect LP. On both of your awnings, you have pitch adjust. Hypothetically, it's raining. You got your picnic table here. Pull down on that pitch adjust. And it's going to tilt your awning away. So your rainwater will run a certain way. You can do that from either end of both of your awnings. Got a porch light. A couple outdoor speakers. Again, your hot water heater. 
to glue for your furnace two things on that one make sure it's never blocked two if you are running your furnace steer clear that does get hot over here you can take that blue spray port hose and hook that up over here if you want to spray things off on this side of the unit down here we've got a couple of low point drains rest of your backup camera propane a couple of 110s up here people don't realize they're there your side view cameras storage up here this is prep for uh generator you can hook a generator up in there there's your battery check your battery post down then make sure those haven't wiggled loose over time and that about covers everything on the outside let's go take a look on the inside all right coming up inside the unit first thing i'd like to point out is the fire extinguisher make sure that you and everyone is camp with you knows the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway in case of emergency to my right as soon as we come in the doorway there's gonna be a control panel i'm just gonna touch that right there i'm gonna start by talking about the bm pro app get the app you can pair it just to your phone you can do a lot of things from your phone shut off your lights run your slides in and out which is nice if you want to stand outside and watch your slides when you're running them out but get the app download it you can do all this from there from the home screen it's going to show me my climate my lights my motors my tanks and my energy but i'm gonna go through them individually over here on the left starting with my tanks here i can see all the levels of my tanks up here i can see where i can turn on my water pump turn on my water heater if electric water heater if gas does make a difference next are my motors i can do my auto leveling from here i can do my slides and my awnings from here my awnings number two i'm gonna extend that out a little bit show you that one working over here keep your finger on the button when you're running them out Run that back in. Now I'm going to show you on your main awning here how far to run these out. Awning number one, I'm extend. Oh, hit extend. You're only going to want to run these out until your flap falls down to 90 degrees and you can see your bar. If you hold that button down, these will continue to run themselves out past that point and run themselves up backwards. So keep an eye on it when you run it out. Make sure you don't run it out further than you need to. Uh, you can also control your slides from here. Get the awning rest way back in here. Get that ran the rest of the way back in. And we'll continue our tour here. Again, your slide outs, you can control from here. Next, our temperature. Turn it on here. There's, we're on cool. Touch that. Cool, hear your AC running. We'll shut your AC off. Shuts off rather quickly. You can also turn on your heat from here. You hear that running. Shut that off from here. You'll notice when you shut the heat off, you'll hear the heat fans running a few minutes before they actually shut off. Slam locks work best when gently slammed. Back up to our control panel. Our lights. You can control all your lights from here. And they are also dimmable. I'll keep our awning lights off go to the kitchen pendant show you how to make that dim all you'll do is slide your finger down this hallway does the same all of them are dimmable from here here's our tire pressures and our what kind of power we're running off from down here these are lights interior exterior both spot you can turn on your water pump again coming over here i'm going to start this back on off next pair this is where you pair to the bm pro app 
Ani number one, Ani number two, and all of our slides can be controlled from here as well. We'll run them in from there later. Here is your fan. Below that, a temperature reader. You'll see a few of those throughout the unit. They help the thermostat to work better by reading the temperature in the unit. Into our mid bathroom is our breaker box and fuses. 110 in here. Your little half bath. Coming out in the hallway here, your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. Reason I mentioned that's 12 volt always running off your battery. So if you are out dry camping or boondocking somewhere, nothing plugged in charging your battery, use your battery disconnect to keep this running your battery down while you're gone. If you're gonna be gone for the whole day. On your island, that's some X, the pump right here. That water pump will come into that uh, water container. You can pick up, put that to it, and then your water will come through this when you turn that pump on. That'll give you fresh water at any time down there. You also have a pop-up power port. Pushing that red button, run them back down. You have a separate manual for your Whirlpool fridge. Top of your uh, microwave here does have a light, high and low, and a fan, high and low. Glass top here makes an excellent backsplash. Just roll that back, turn on your panel light, turn that to light, hit your spark, and there's your flame. All three of these will light the same way. Shut all them off. Same thing on the oven, turn this to light, hit your spark down here, that'll light it, and then turn it to the desired temperature. No need for a pilot light anymore. Lock this panel light down and it becomes an oven light. Again, it's another spot for one of those Furion speakers that you can order. Some individual lighting. Uh, we've got a couple of recliners here. Parachute pull. Reach in here and pull up on that. That'll recline it. Put them back. Remotes are in here. Crank up your sound system real quick here. Starting with your TV. These do have safety straps for travel. You have to run a digital channel scan wherever you're at to pick up local channels. I think I'm surprised you picked up anything in this metal building here. Uh, more remotes for your sound system, but I'll come over here and show you that. Crank that up. JBL sound system. Switch this to got HDMI's, ARCs. We're going to get around Bluetooth and FM. Three zones for that. Indoors, outdoors, or both. Down below that, your fireplace. Not just for looks anymore. I can go through here and show you all the pretty colors. But the biggest thing is the heat. Crank that baby up on high. If you're plugged in at a campsite, instead of using your gas, use their electricity to warm it up in here. Alright, your sofa here. we got some lighting over here. Let me show you real quickly on how to turn this into a bed. So you don't want to stand in the middle here. Remove your Velcro cushions. Get them here. Fold your legs out. Fold everything towards you. Fold them back down. And just that quickly you've got another sleeping quarters. Now very important, when putting this back, Lift your back up first. Otherwise you could damage this just by lifting it up into the other one. Then, hold our legs in. Jack nice this down. And just that quickly, we are back to the sofa. Coming into our dinette area. You do have a couple of matching folding chairs up underneath your bed up there. Storage here. These do strap down, storage here, as well as an extension. 
Another spot you can turn on and off your lights. Head on up into the bedroom. Get your big king bed. Storage up here or, or a small sleeping area. Uh, this is where it's wired for solar. Just keep that panel on there in case you ever want to get this wired for solar. In the future, that shows the text where it's pre-wired. You have a slide control as long as ceiling lights in here. Ladder will fold out. Another TV in here. Here's your cable 110. A couple of charge ports. A Roku TV back here. Remote will be in your bed or your drawer here. Another temperature reader. When traveling, make sure you have this door snapped into the open position. And then our shower doors snapped into the open position. These one especially, because they're glass, we don't want them bouncing all around. Back in the bathroom, you have a hand open vent. Prepped for a washer and dryer if you ever decide to put one in here. Closet, make sure we have this snap back as well for travel. Continuing around, not much left up here. Shut off our lights as we head back down. And shut off the ceiling lights in here. Make sure there's no accident lights, none. All right, now I'm gonna come to my main control panel here and I'm gonna touch number one because I know that that will shut off all my interior lights except for accent lights. So I can walk through the unit, shut off all my accent lights. Come back to my main control panel, touch number one and say doors and drawers. Walk through the unit. Make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing is going to impede your slide from coming in. I'm going to go ahead and put your paperwork down in this drawer here. All these drawers, make sure they're closed. Nothing's in between your bedroom and here. And I'm going to start by using this controller up here for the bedroom. Retract. You can also do this from your control panel. But from here you can watch it come in. I'm actually going to bring my door around so it's almost closed. Continue to hit retract. That yeah, should be just about in. That light will shut off when I hit number one here. All right, I'm gonna go to my control panel. I'll close one slide from here and then the other one from down here, just so you see all three spots working. Let's go to our motors. Go to slide number two, retract. That's gonna be our kitchen side. Again, make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Gotta keep your finger on the button. Sometimes you're not paying attention, your finger slides off. There it goes. All right, slides all the way in. Now I'll do slide number three from down here. Go all the way to slide three and hit retract. So now you know all the different ways that you can bring your slides in. Did you hear that noise? It's nothing grinding. It's nothing harming your slide mechanism. It's just your slide mechanism saying, hey, I'm in all the way. You don't have to bring me in any further. All right, hit number one, shut off our interior lights. Peek outside, make sure number two is off. They are, and exit our unit. Now the biggest thing to remember on these steps is to make sure your door is all the way open. Otherwise this will catch on it when coming in. You also have adjustable feet on this. Bring the cotter pin right here, in and out. 
and that'll bring these up and down set that inside there before you leave the dump station we're best when slammed lift and turn this handle all right at this point if we are out boondocking dry camping we're gonna get over here draw off campsite get up underneath here and dump that low point drain for that fresh water tank we're at campsite we're gonna hook our power our water and our cable we come up to this auto leveling system and turn it on again by touching the up and down arrow and we're simply going to touch retract all that light's going to start flashing the auto leveling system is going to adjust itself it's going to bring up our rear ones and then it's going to set your landing legs at where we were before running your auto leveling system and that's done we're going to hook our hook up our hitch by bringing back up and down our front leveling system and head on up to the dump station that's the dump station park accordingly all right so park accordingly you're gonna dump is gonna be just in front of your tires on your driver's side of your tow vehicle hook up your black hose here first thing you gonna do is pull this handle that's gonna open up our lines then we're gonna come up here and pull this black handle that's gonna be your sewage. That's gonna be all your black tank. When that sounds like it's no longer draining, go inside, look at your control panel, make sure it's empty. If it is, leave this black handle open, grab the hose at the dump station, and hook up to this tank flush. Let that run for a good five minutes. Again, emphasizing with this handle open. Let that run. When that's done, remove that hose. Make sure all that washout that you just put in there has drained. Then close your black handle and pull your first gray handle. That's going to be cleaner waters, your sinks, your showers. They'll clean your sewage hose out for you. Pull your other gray handle. While your second gray handle is draining, I like to go ahead and dump my other low point drain. Well, maybe I'll wait to find out. All right, back here, we're going to over on our campsite, get up underneath there and open up those low point drains. When those low point drains are done, we're going to get back in here to your hot water heater. We're going to lift up on this pressure release valve. We're going to dump out all that hot water. And when it's done, push that back down. And then you can pull this drain plug. Put this back on here. Head back around. Close up our gray tank, remove that hose, store it in a nice sanitary place, and head on home. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this eagle for many years to come. Happy camping.